Using the information in this video, you should absolutely be able to make a grilled cheese exactly how you want to. Welcome to episode five of Recipes Remastered. Today, we're looking at the inside out grilled cheese by Chef John from foodwishes.com. It's a sinfully delicious sandwich as is, but today we'll make one with homemade sandwich bread, as well as using cooking technique and food science to make a sandwich with extra crispy layers and a more gooey interior. Also, as an ode to the man himself, I slipped in a little cayenne. Hey everyone, I'm Ethan, a home cooking nerd who likes to find better ways to cook and share them with all of you. Today is all about grilled cheese, and though I will be showing you my preferences of how I would make this grilled cheese, you will also be able to use this information to create your grilled cheese creation of choice. We'll be looking at things like mayo versus butter versus oil, how to use American cheese along with other flavoring cheeses, and how to change up the cheese crisp technique so we can keep our toasted bread integrity. First though, let's take a look at Chef John's recipe, then we'll talk about the changes, go through my recipe, and finally do a side-by-side -side taste test. Let's hop in. To start, gather two pieces of your favorite sandwich bread. Soft butter can be spread on, or if it's not soft, add it to a cast iron over medium-low heat and sop it up with the bread. To that, Chef John specifies cheddar cheese as his cheese of choice. Once added, the sandwich is assembled and more cheddar cheese is added on the top piece of bread. This will start to melt and create a cheese crust on the outside. Flip the sandwich over, let the bottom cheese crisp up and add more cheese on top. One more flip and let that toast slowly over medium low heat until it is done and nice and crispy. And there you have it, a beautifully crispy cheese exterior with a soft cheesy interior. And even though it pains me, Chef John cut his into a rectangle. For the cheese pool, try to push the cheese into the center and then just pull it apart. It's definitely a solid sandwich as is, but let's look at some of the variables that I'm adjusting and more importantly, why. First up is homemade sandwich bread. Now, homemade isn't inherently better than store-bought. It's really down to taste and texture preference. However, here are a couple of things to think about. First is the texture. For the sandwich bread recipe that I'll share with you, it's a little bit sturdier than your typical white bread, and we can see this in this highly scientific floppiness test. This bread leads to a much more satisfying chew, in my opinion. Next, the bread can be sliced to the exact thickness that you would like. If you would like thicker bread and want to add more cheese or thinner bread with less cheese, you can do that to create the ultimate separation between the layers, which is going to change your mouthfeel experience. Lastly, homemade bread can be customized with flavors. As I showed in my beginner's guide to sandwich bread, this everything bagel bread was an absolute game changer and would be amazing for a grilled cheese like this. Today though, I did keep it simple. Anyway, let's talk fat choice. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, is Ethan going to start shilling mayo again? You bet I am. To explain why though, first let's think about the goal of grilled cheese. We want it to cook at the perfect temperature so the outside is nice and golden brown while the cheesy interior is perfectly melted through. Let me tell you why mayo has the best properties for that job. From this chart from the Food Lab by J. Kenji Lopez Alt, we can see the smoke point of butter is at 300 to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and soybean oil, the oil typically used in commercial mayo, is all the way up to 495 degrees Fahrenheit. How does this affect it? Well, if you have issues keeping the pan temperature consistent or have a bad habit of not paying attention while making your grilled cheese, that butter will burn much quicker before the mayo does. Here's a quick test of both after just two minutes on the griddle on medium low heat. You can see that the butter is fairly well burnt, but the mayo, though starting to get burnt, still looks fine and I would have no problem eating it. Also, since we can leave the mayo bread on a little bit longer without it burning or smoking, this ensures that all the cheese will melt if you get a little ambitious with how many slices that you add. Basically, mayo increases your chances of success for a perfectly brown exterior and a gooey cheesy interior. Next, let's talk about texture differences. From the same chart from the Food Lab, we see that butter is 62% saturated fat versus 14% saturated fat for soybean oil. What does this have to do with anything? Well, Kenji explains that in general, the higher saturated fat content, the more efficiently it will crisp up, but high saturated fat content can leave a waxy coating. Knowing this, that could negatively or positively affect the mouthfeel of grilled cheese depending on your preference. Science aside, I decided to test the browning qualities of peanut oil, butter, and mayo on livestream to see which one that I like best. 
and here are the photos. All were toasted at the same heat with the same amount of fat source. Any guesses on which one is which? If you were thinking that I would eat the hell out of all of those, I'd be in agreement. I don't think you can objectively say that one brown's better than the other, and they were all plenty crispy. I also did a taste test and found that I do prefer the taste of mayo for its slight tang and cleaner mouthfeel. The butter is still good, but it's definitely not as good as I remembered as a kid. To me, it kind of has that greasier feel, and it kind of takes away from the flavor of the cheese, but again, that's preference. So in summary, this is why I'm choosing mayo over butter. First, I prefer the taste. Second, I prefer the mouthfeel after eating. And mayo also gets points for me for having a higher smoke point, which gives you a greater success rate. And it does have superior spreadability without having to mess around with melting cold butter from the fridge for whatever that's worth. Anyway, let's talk cheese. I'm not here to argue that American cheese is plastic because it is, but guess what? Essentially all cheese is plastic as plastic means easily molded and shaped just like some other cheeses, cheddar and mozzarella. Here's where I direct you to this Serious Eats article if you wanna learn a little bit more. Instead, I wanna focus on the superior meltability of American cheese and why it helps create a perfectly gooey interior that is just not possible with other cheeses. You see, American cheese is made by grinding up other cheeses, such as cheddar, and adding an emulsifier like sodium citrate. You can kind of think about it like making sausage out of meat, except you're making cheese out of cheese. Anyway, it's the emulsifier that makes all of the difference. From the food lab, we learned that cheese is made out of water, milk fat, and protein micelles which provide cheese its structure. In the fridge, these components stay together, but if heated, they begin to separate again. This is why if you leave a cheese plate out too long in a warm room, you'll start to see some droplets of fat. Here is a side-by-side -side of cheddar and American cheese that have been melted in the microwave. You notice the cheddar has broken, meaning the fats and water separated, becoming greasy and stringy compared with the smooth melting of the American because of that sodium citrate. What does that mean for us? Well, it has a perfectly gooey center instead of one that is tough and stringy, and I also just made some instant cheese spread for my crackers. Now, does this mean that you should only pile on slices of American in your grilled cheese? Absolutely not. Instead, use it as the glue to keep your flavoring cheeses together. For me, I love the taste of smoked Gouda paired with an aged cheddar, so I sandwich those around the American cheese. If you wanted a better cheese pool, you could try using cheeses like mozzarella or Havarti, as are those are nice and stringy when they melt. Now, it is fair to note that if you can't stand the thought of using American cheese, other good melting cheeses substitute would include Gruyere or Swiss or Enmental, but nothing quite stands up to the superior meltability of American due to the emulsifiers it contains. Lastly, let's talk about our cheese crisp. In Chef John's version, he places the cheese on the outside of the bread and flips it over, which works, but this doesn't allow the bread to crisp up as well on itself, so you kind of miss out on some of that extra texture. For my version, I'll first make a standard grilled cheese grilled to golden brown on both sides. Then I'll make the cheese crisp separately, with a little cayenne of course. Then as soon as the cheese is crisp on bottom, you can attach it to the sandwich with the melty side. By doing this, you get a crispy cheese exterior, a slightly melty cheese interior, and a crispy piece of bread before you actually get to the interior of the sandwich. It's kind of like making an extra grilled cheese on the outside of the sandwich. So let me walk you through the step-by-step -step process and then we'll do our side-by-side -side taste test. To start, make the sandwich bread. But since I already have a video and recipe on that, I'll direct you to my website, which is linked below. It's a really easy recipe, but if not, you can just also pick up your favorite sandwich loaf. Anyway, at the stove, set a well-seasoned cast iron on medium-low heat. The pan ideally will be large enough to hold two pieces of bread. Gather the mayo, the slice of American, and your other flavoring cheeses of choice. Again, I use smoked Gouda and cheddar. Next, spread each piece of bread with mayo, and you can absolutely spread it on both sides and toast the inside as well, but I actually prefer not to because I want that soft pocket of bread and gooey cheese. At the stove, place one slice of bread down and add the slice of smoked Gouda, followed by the American in the middle and the cheddar on top. Place the top piece down and slowly toast the sandwich. Move it around and add more mayo if you notice uneven browning on the bread. The key is to go low and slow, and even more so if you did end up using butter. Once it is toasted to perfection, flip it over and toast the other side, repeating the same process. Meanwhile, add a sprinkle of grated cheddar cheese to the pan to start melting, and don't forget the pinch of cayenne. 
When the bottom is crisp, but the top is still gooey, flip the sandwich over to attach it and then place another sprinkle of cheese and cayenne down. Repeat that process and there you have the inside out grilled cheese. Remember, always cut on a diagonal for the aesthetic and the superior strength of a triangle. And lastly, here is the cheese bowl. Now, not a super stringy one because that's not what I was after. Instead, I've got that perfect gooey interior. Absolutely magnificent. And now it is time for the taste test. It is now taste test time. I have Chef John's over here on the left and I have mine over here on the right. And just first looks aesthetically, by doing the cheese crisp after, instead of just putting it on top of the bread, you kind of get these little overlapping edges that are really, really crisp. And it just kind of looks aesthetically better, but let's actually give them a little taste test. Pretty solid and standard, but let's give this one a taste test. That perfectly gooey bite, about to go down. Damn. Again, all about the textures. The cheese is so gooey from that American. It provides that beautiful like pocket of gooiness that you can't get with just using like cheddar or some other cheeses. It's, it's got that emulsifier that keeps everything nice and gooey and just absolutely divine. Now, if you did want a bigger cheese pool, you could actually use different stringier cheeses like mozzarella or Havarti are pretty good at, at sh getting really long stringy ones. But I love the creaminess and I love the smoked Gouda um, and the mix with cheddar for the outside. This one's just like, it's crispier on the outside. It's got more texture from the bread. Like I showed you guys that sandwich bread. Um, like white sandwich bread is kind of just like soft and it just doesn't have as much bite and chew to it. This has like that perfect balance of chew from the actual bread, the crispness from this little cheese guy on the outside. For my money, that is an absolute gem of an inside out grilled cheese. You get the little nice spice from the cayenne too. You really just can't beat it. Whether you actually agree with some of my preference choices or not, like mayo instead of butter, using the information in this video, you should absolutely be able to make a grilled cheese exactly how you want to. So if any of you guys try out some grilled cheese creations of your own, definitely send them to me on Instagram. I would love to see. But that is going to wrap it up for this one. The recipe will be on my website, as always, linked below. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.